Yep, a lot of stuff happening already in this draft. Oh, Interesting, yeah. yeah, the lion gets ignored. Uh, there we go, oh. no longer ignored. <laughs> there it I is. Was I was about to say, part of the reason, at least on the RNG side, Nyx Assassin, I think, fills a, a lot of the same purpose as a lion, mm -hmm. providing all the lockdown control. Uh, having these melee four positions can make lions game a little bit hard. Um, but I, I like the lion versus Nyx, because if you have the sentry and you scout him in Vendetta, trying to come for you, you insta-hex him and you can blow up this Nyx before he gets off the piss of the carapace. So, uh, so you favor the... Yeah. yeah, you favor the lion a little bit over that Nyx there. Um, it, it, not really I mean, I think both, not necessarily, I don't think it's like a, I favor either side. It's just like, I think l l you can play Lion into Nyx, but at the same time, I think it's very much like a mind, like a mind game between the two. Like Nyx is trying to use his Vendetta to get on the back lines, but he has to make sure he doesn't get scouted by sentries. Mm -hmm. uh, with this Undying pick coming out from RNG, I do wonder what Aster Ares can do to deal with that Tombstone. Any thoughts on that one, Ares? Yeah, at the moment, they don't have the greatest heroes to kill off the tomb, and it's going to be very awkward as well, because you have a lot of stuns on RNG, so you can kind of make it even more difficult for them to get aggressive and, and prioritize bringing that down, because that's what we see so often. If, if you can't kill the tombstone early in a fight, then it just continues to drag on, the zombies build up, and then you kind of dug yourself a hole, and trying to escape's too hard, trying to stay in your ground and fight's too difficult, it, it, it's a mess, so... Trying to see what ass Ares want to go. Maybe... Okay, they actually jug. So, I was contemplating if the AM would come through. I think, you know, even uh, Black was talking about yesterday where it was like <laughs> a perfect anti-mage game and still no one's picking it up. I think it just goes yeah. to show that the hero is not the, not the greatest, even though it looked like a decently Ten strong game. Remaining. The Juggernaut gives you a, a strong lane versus Darkseer. It also gives you a way to deal Five with the Undying Tombstone. Remaining. It's, I think they, they see the, like the Undying, the Tombstone is something you want to be able to kill. Jug does okay, but more than anything, you see this Dark Seer, and you've got to pick a carry that can lane against the Iron Shell and the constant damage. Jug is healing ward um, and is pretty self-sufficient. Also, you've got kill threat, like Lion Clockwork, both whoever you're laying with has some stuns, some lockdowns. So I think either way, um, there's some kill threat when you've got that, the couple of points in the, the Blade Fury. So uh, I, I do like the Jug pick, even though it's not oh, sort of like one of the conventional carries right now. So we are going to be, I guess, looking at a mid laner left to round out Aster Ares' draft. And then on the side of RNG, is there a potential for the Lena to go mid? Or is it just very much, nah, that's going to be in that support position? More likely than not. I think it has to Ten be mid, just because they've got the Nyx Undying supports. Um, I don't think Nyx can play Five as a core. Remain. And mm -hmm. I don't think you want to play Lena safe lane, so... Um, it looks very fast paced, like this RNG lineup. They want, they probably want a hero to put the Iron Shell on. Right now, the Nyx in lane is good, but once you get to the mid game, you want that carry, oh, that melee carry down. that gets an Iron Shell. Um, I'm a little bit surprised the Nature's Prophet actually gets banned, because I don't think that would have been a great pick. I think they're better off getting like a uh, PA type hero or Spectre, which is banned, I guess, but something, something to Iron Shell. Yeah, it's also the surge as well through those late game fights. Like you see, if you have a lineup that doesn't have as many stuns, so it's just, just a way for you not to get kited. And I think it's a big mistake that if you go for a range position one when you have a Dark Seer on your lineup, it's just not fully utilizing his arsenal. So uh, I like at least the life still getting banned out, but I'm in a greens as well. This Nature's Prophet, I guess maybe they're a little bit worried about RNG just snowballing and taking tower off the tower, but interesting. RNG's turn to timber what the last pick's gonna be? Ooh, last Timber! Pick. Now you gotta get something good against Timber. Maybe they, do they anti mage now? Um, <laughs> now? I mean, there's not many good carry matchups versus Timber. Like, some carries. I feel like some teams try the gyro, it's which is kind of like a bit hit or miss at times. I do have two Monkey things to say. I do have two things to say. Monkey King, lowest win rate that we have seen uh, so far in TI qualifiers. Are they going to go the Luna? That is not something I feel like either of you were leading up to them potentially picking. But quickly, I wanted to touch on the Timber. Timber, we still banned a lot first phase um, for a number of, I guess, the few first few China games, but mainly a lot in Southeast Asia qualifiers. So to see it go all the way through and then to be picked up as last pick is quite surprising as well. Um, so I am excited to finally see a Timber game and to see what he can bring. But yeah. God, walk me through the, the round out of the RNG lineup and why this Luna is potentially going to work for them and potentially not going to work for them. 
No, I think Luna's a great pick here. I'm, mm -hmm. I, yeah, it didn't really come to my mind, but like as soon as I saw, I'm like, oh, makes toast. The lane is fine against Timber. Maybe at some point you get bullied out and have to go jungle, but that's not a problem a for a Luna. Oh, oh, mid Timber, you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Phoenix of is playing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Phoenix, yeah. There we go. So mid Timber <laughs> against the D Stones. I'm, yeah, that's a little odd. That's, but either yeah. way, yep. yeah. I'm happy with the Luna pick. It just gives them that good stable carry. I think this RNG draft yeah. is just very safe, very standard, doesn't have any real weak points. So then uh, where would you like to place your prediction on team? I'll go with RNG. Okay. There is. Oh, they got team, <laughs> they got Lion. I don't know. It's hard to kind of go against them, but this Timber going mid against the Lena is a bit interesting. Quite often we see that it's a... Uh, Timber versus a melee strength matchup. Um, I thought they're actually going to try and run the Doom mid and put the Timber off, but it's not the case. So yeah, I like RNG. I think their team fight is is going to exceed expectations, and I, I just overall think they're a bit of a better team too. Look, I think I have to go with you guys. This Luna looks great on the RNG side. I'm also just a big fan of Luna after seeing her in the last series. But I will let you guys jump into game number one of this lower bracket best of three. Thank you, Nat. Oh. Gods, we uh, get some interesting uh, picks up here. The Darkseer in particular, I feel like is a, is a hero that we're not seeing as much so far. In particular, I feel like for the China qualifiers, as we do have a bit of a pause. It's uh, really not a start to the game unless the, uh, a pause is out there. But <laughs> how do we feel overall in, in regards to their lanes? Like, is there one that we should be paying a little bit more attention to to the others? I am curious to see how this mid timber does. Um, I think this is a hero I've seen, you know, it's been very commonly banned and occasionally picked up. Um, I, you know, most notably, I would say, I think the last couple of days in Europe, there's been a lot of timber games, uh, but it's almost always been offlane. So I don't think Lena's necessarily like a, it's not a bad matchup, but it's not, it's not a good matchup by any means because Lena's really good at pushing out the wave um, and isn't going to get like pressured too much by the timber and all his melee damage. So. All in all, um, I think that mid lane's going to be curious to see if Timber can kind of take over the game and like play that Timber that's playing behind the tower, pressuring your tower early. Um, other than that, I think the Jug versus Darkseer. That's a lane where, you know, it's that pressure lane where can Darkseer um, do his thing with a Nyx Assassin and really bully the Jug, or is Jug going to be able to play aggressive with the Blade Fury? So that, that, that as to Aerie safe lane to me, is perhaps the most important for this game. Do you think it's going to be easier with a clockwork position five instead of the, the lion playing in that lane? Uh, I think the nice thing maybe is that I'm wondering if they can leave Doom alone. Maybe the lion's going to try to get like a fast level two or something in the off lane and then TP up for some trial lane action. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing that because I think clockwork lion having double stuns to set up a blade fear could be really nice. So I wouldn't. I would personally expect and hope that Asta Aries right now are having discussion like let's make early support rotations um, to basically win that safe lane. The question is, can Doom play against a Luna Undying alone? And yeah. maybe the answer is just no. Yeah, that's. I was just going to ask that next. Like that does not sound like an easy lane at all. Any Undying versus an off lane strength hero, you can solo harass him out of the lane pretty much. And yeah. also Luna, you got to think about you know. If, if Gorking wants to put even a second point in beam just to secure the lane, maybe he doesn't need to, can prioritize a little bit more on his you know, uh, farming steroid kind of tradition. But it, it definitely feels like if Doom's solo, then I, I don't know how much he's really going to be able to get out of it. Like maybe you have to yeah. put a little bit more emphasis on Yona actually dragging the creeps behind the tower because it, it does seem like that's a pretty rough lane. But how about yep. the undying though we're, we're seeing a lot of you know red panda playing some interesting heroes we saw the brew master on day one now we're seeing him play the undying a hero that's kind of fallen out of favor what, what's your opinion on the hero it's pretty mixed i would say more leaning towards a bit negative um i think it's very much that laning specialist that kind of falls off later on you're forced to kind of try and take team fights around high ground cliffs where you can put tombstone on them and i think there's just better defensive saving supports if you want to look at like you know the soul rip save and saves and whatnot so i would say i'm mixed on it um i think i like the idea of your your favorites so picking strong lanes against a team that you don't you know against that series i think rng probably feel like if they go into the mid game with a slight laning stage win or even even lanes they probably feel like they're the better team who can win it so i think 
it's just like a safe, like, okay, let's not lose the lanes kind of pick. But um, generally speaking, there's other supports that are going to offer a bit more um, a lot of the time. And do you feel like that confidence going into the mid to late game is just maybe the experience showing up a little bit more for RNG? Or do you think kind of the skill gap might be a factor as well? A um, bit of both. Um, you know, they've got a mix of that kind of experience, you know, that we that's obviously going to be good. They've had success. They've had a lot more um, playing time against those top Division One teams, players like, you know, Flyby's kind of been around for a little while, but they've also got some, you know, young, unproven players too, the likes of, you know, D-Stones and stuff, uh, kind of newer to the competitive scene. Um, even, you know, God King, like, they've, they're kind of like a young, hungry team as well. I think it's more, they, they've had more high-level match practice you know yeah in that division one they're playing against bg they're playing against ig lgd etc whereas asta aries trying to you know climb their way up so we'll, we'll see how things pan out but i mean do you do you feel like we're in for a more one-sided series or do you think this how, how do you see this series go aries um i definitely think it's going to be favored rng but I've been pretty impressed with how Aster played, honestly, versus Extreme Gaming. I think they looked very one-sided against Phoenix Gaming as well. They, you know, they were able to take the series. Of course, it was a 2-1. Yeah, they also looked pretty decent versus E-Home in that upper bracket round one. So they've been a lot more convincing than some of the other lower-seeded teams. So I have been impressed by them. But yeah, this is... It's definitely going to be a difficult matchup. Like, I think RNG are going to be one of those teams like we've kind of been highlighting through the uh, the days over here, the, the China qualifiers that, you know, it's Elephant, RNG, E-Home. Maybe there might be a, a Dark Horse that might take a map. Maybe Asta can do it, but it's... Their backs are up against the wall, I think. Yeah. There, it feels like there's a very clear top three Burns, in China. And so far, none of the other teams have... <laughs> really showing that they can contend like elephant rng and ehome have only dropped games to each other um ehome yet to drop a game so i'm I, yeah I'm, I'm personally not convinced that any of the other teams are going to be real contenders in the chinese regions which is not to you know heavily criticize them i think it's it's kind of similar to you know southeast asia where yeah it was a super stack qualifier with crazy games and maybe there was a bit more depth there with you know once you got past the top three of Fnatic, TNC, Boom, there was also like Execration, Neon. But um, most regions have a clear, you know, top three or four teams fighting for that slot. And then the other teams are like, you know, probably they don't have much of a chance, but they're going to try and be that dark horse. Yeah. Well, I think like if you're looking at Southeast Asia, you could arguably say like eight of the teams potentially could have made that qualification spot. Like, you didn't even highlight yeah. Motivate or Galaxy Racer, which <laughs> I know True. Motivate somehow got knocked out as early as what they did. And personally, Denorg and I were like, they're going to be a dark horse. We said Galaxy Racer as well. But, you know, that Southeast Asia was a, a crazy qualifier. And, and we're going to see these later days here for China continue to ramp up as well. As we are at day three, our lower bracket round three matchup. We're going to have our second team tonight eliminated after this series is completed. The pause done and dusted. Should have a bit of a brawl bake out for the uh, the bounty rune. So it looks like either teams are set up for the top rune. Yeah. Dire with the vision. They see these heroes across the river while Radiant do not. Their ward is to the bottom side of their mid tower. So they actually don't see Asta Ares. This could be a nice little trap for Asta Ares. Double ward around this top rune spot. They are all in on this fight. Do you feel like they have uh, a stronger level one than what RNG might have? Uh, I mean, it is undying, but if they catch him by surprise, I think they, yeah, sure. Ooh, three mana pale. Oh, it's so funny to see the trade of the, the Nyx stun with the Lion stun as well, as Felix yeah. will get chased down, and here's our first blood for Asta Ares. Ulu will pick that up. He's been a, a player that I've been very impressed with so far through the Asta Ares games, and giving him first blood. Mo, well, you were highlighting that the Jug Clockwork lane against the Dark Sea Nyx could be a little bit more tricky. Well, with a first blood, gives him a, a handicap here. That's, uh, that's really nice. Yeah, I think the Jug can make a lot of use of this early gold. Getting the extra regen sustained. Getting an early magic wand. If they're going to be casting constant spells at you. Because he is going to be forced to farm under his tower a lot and take iron shell damage. So, very helpful for the Jug to have that extra gold infusion. 
And with Chug constantly farming deep under the tower, is this where you want to see, like, maybe Siamese Cat block the hard camp so RNG can't shove the lane out, then deny a, away from the, yeah. the hog? Yeah. Oh, he's not going to actually block it. If anything, it was looking like Nyx was trying to block it up top. His clockwork is one of the, you know, immediately five position in this game. Actually, you know, you're playing against melee offlaner, so this is a very good clockwork game, I feel like. We're already seeing him put a lot of pressure down bottom Luna trying to deal with Yuna and may even be able to find a kill with the Lucent Beams here. Another okay. Beam for a couple seconds. Needs the fog and just as you asked for it, Yuna, back to safety. But you already see how the side lanes are, are going to play out here. You know, both teams are prioritizing a lot more and kind of the good old lane pulling shenanigans as somehow it's, yeah. it's still in Dota. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. It's, it's something that Icewalk's kind of tried to patch out. Yeah. He's made it so you like can't pull it from certain places. You know, can't pull the first wave. It's like it, teams always find a way to manipulate these waves, no matter what you do. Do you, do you like that it's still a thing, or should he just hard get rid of it? Uh, it's it's just so hard. To, like, it's hard to find the perfect way to approach it. I think. Um, I, I think it's okay. That's a thing. I, I've been one of the, I know at times I've gone through phases where I was like, oh, you know, this this is just like, you have these lanes where they're pulling wave after wave behind the tower. L lanes don't feel like lanes. It just feels like they're creating this scenario where, you know, carries don't fight off laners. But the way, I think the way I Frog approached it was making it so that um, off laners aren't as sacri like aren't yep. being sacrificed. Because yep. in the past, it felt like that's the only way off laners could actually play and get XP and farm. Nowadays, this feels like an off laners patch where off laners, um, are actually pressuring and contesting carry. So that's kind of been a, a better fix where it feels like they just don't need to go for those pulls. Yeah, and we've kind of seen that the like the offlane, it, it's so difficult to be able to actually get somewhat of some farm, like you're saying, in, in a tough matchup. You, if you've got a hard lane, teams are going to get crafty. They're going to be able to find ways to get their farm, get their experience. I think this is a beautiful thing about Dota with how innovative you can see the people getting. and. Um, you know, there was a stage where I was looking back at some of some games and, you know, the Iron Talon build where you just start off in the jungle. Like, oh, remember that? Like, instead Saddle of just pulling this. the creeps, let's just go, let's go Talon and start jungling. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. that's... Uh, <laughs> it was fun, you know, as a lower skill offlane. I, I'm terrible at offlane, but it meant whenever I had to play offlane, I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go Iron Talon and be a jungler because, you know, that's, that's a very safe place to be at times, but... Um, and even going like, yeah, there's been times where heroes like, um, you know, Urshaker was picked up just to Fissure Block and secure yeah, yeah. your offlaner at game, because otherwise he, he wouldn't be able to get any XP. So finding ways to enable offlaners has been a thing, you know, going back to the start of Dota. Um, even when it was like the super hard sacrificial offlaners, even then you still had to find the best way to give them a game. Nowadays, it feels like the offlane is just any other core and getting at times mm -hmm. just as much farm as carries. Yeah, I mean, you, speaking about like carries getting, or at least offlane is feeling like a carry, Doom's one of them. You know, we've seen his yeah. late game prowess, especially fast, the areas when we were able to watch him versus extreme gaming is top. Some aggression will lose with this Blade Fury. They can't close the distance on Felix, but they can close the distance on Flyby as Ulu will pick up his second kill of the game with the crit. That was so good. Ulu, I mean, you, yeah, you were kind of praising this guy and what he's done. He initially goes on the next, forces the Darkseer to surge him away, and then he just instantly changes target to that Darkseer. And with his early game first blood and all this farming skin, treads Windlace, he's so fast and has so much damage output. And oh. wow, Siamese Cat fence. Felix on the Nyx, so they end up killing the Nyx as well. This Jug is massive. And he's level 5 too, which is so scary. That Blade Fury is now 26 second cooldown, which makes it that much easier to be able to deal with the Iron Shell and just pressure out the Darkseer. Now you have to kind of use the Surge. He's only level 4 on Darkseer. This lane is, is, I mean, he's got 24 last hits, but the fact that you have a free farming Jug who can shove out the wave and then farm the, the hard camp, farm the small camp, whatever he wants to, it's... This is going to be incredibly farm juggernaut. And a lane that we haven't even spoken about, mid Phoenix, he's top of the last hits. Like, it's, I guess, Lean is not going to bully out a Timber Saw as bot lane. You're not. Should be the sacrifice. That will be the first death of the game here for Aster Ares. They have to drop the tombstone to get the kill. 
But yeah, all these lanes for Dara are just going incredibly well, it looks like. Nick shows up to leak some XP. They throw a stun out on mid. I don't know they have the damage. They have a Laguna Blade, but I think with the reactive is too tanky as we catch the kill bottom. Luna getting the Doom, and yeah. Tim with the uh, and I think this mid lane has become what I kind of expected, where it's just a farm trade. Lina can't really kill Timber. Timber probably can't kill Lina without a rotation. So the question is going to be, can this Timber take this mid tier on tower? Because I think that's that's the big goal for this Timber is to try and take this tower. Do you feel like the itemization could be for Phoenix here? Is there anything in particular? Like, does he need a hood early on, even potentially an eternal shroud, or can he go greedy with his itemization? I would say just their fast foot sounds good to me. I think there's a lot of magic damage, even heroes like Luna. Um, if there's an early eclipse, it's, it's all magic damage until way later on. So casual hood into whatever you want. Um, trying to see what feels good this game. But uh, yeah, maybe even go for that upgrade Eternal Shroud. It does feel like an item that's going to make you near unkillable. I will say that all the lanes were going pretty well for Ass Areas, but actually take a look at the Doom. <laughs> He's struggling. 15 last hits, lowest net worth out of all the cores, even behind the darks here, and especially with that death previously, yeah. it's going to continue to hinder his game. So I guess this is the, the shining spot for RNG. Is you've got the Gold King Luna, who's 2 0 with 47 last hits, so he's having an exceptional lane. The kind of undying effect, I guess this has traditionally been a counter some of these tankier off lane. And you pair it with a Luna, who's one of the best laning carries, so... Uh, they very much set their picks up to make Doom's game tough. The problem is these other lanes haven't gone well. They're, their off lane has been a bit of a disaster with how fun this Jug is. And he's already has a Javelin online. He is massive. What do you feel like the decision is here for him to go the, the Maelstrom instead of maybe something like a, a Battle Fury? Battle Fury probably just feels too greedy. I think the item's kind of fallen off on most heroes outside of maybe some of the like PA and anti mages of the world. Um, I think this is just a more well rounded farming plus fighting item. A little bit of skirmish breakout in the river. Just Red Panda drops that tombstone, but the lack of stuns right now, we're really seeing it come into fruition as either team can't continue to, to gap close and, and stick on their targets here but i guess it's tombstone on cooldown 60 seconds maybe this could be a bit of a window as we already see the duo support for Ast areas starting to connect down to bot they're looking to play with their offlaner who's still a bit away from the level six so they're not gonna have this in the toolkit here if they're, they're going for a kill on god king yeah, luna already has the max lunar blessing so she gets a thousand bonus night vision which is pretty huge um one of the other reasons why this hero can be so good as a farmer is it's just she's much harder to gank than most traditional heroes as well. Hit any stacks for her? Yeah, none of the ancients just shed and actually wow, take a look at die. <laughs> they blocked the ancients, they blocked the hard. Why don't you yeah. even go out about and block this small as well? Yeah, they are serious about these jungle camps. They need to get some sentries out ASAP on the radio. These sentries lasting seven, or sorry, eight minutes is a huge problem uh, in the current patch. You have to deward them on your jungle base immediately. This is kind of the thing that we've seen from the Luna. Like she's one of the best flash farming carries right now. And the fact that you haven't got any stacks is a little bit worrying here for RNG with how farmed your juggernaut is and you know, his Farm's going to continue to build up. This is about to be our Maelstrom completed. He's top of the net worth. Yep. And yeah, there's some Dire stacks waiting for him as well, potentially. It does feel like the RNG want to make some plays here. Luna, caught by an Earth Spike. Oh, nice cancel nice. on the Doom. The body block point, the body block too. I'm going to rotate down Phoenix, which should be the damage required. Even Flyby is actually in the area. Well, Back, drag back too, but you are seeing that the damage lacking to deal with this timber saw. He's already got the hood completed, so he's going to be a, a beefy boy early on. Great defensive plays from Felix on the next air, saving his Luna, who is not going for any eclipse points, no third, fourth points in Lucent Beam, is all in on the farming, and we'll be looking to hit that kind of mid game timing and just be as farm centric as possible. You've got a mid laner who's going to do a scepter, so they're going to be looking at these stones to kind of be that more fighting tempo here in the mid game. 
Once we do get to that mid game, who do you think the priority is for Doom to use his ultimate on? Because we see Lena has been a, a pretty hot target in a, in a lot of our games, but it feels like if you don't yeah. Doom the darks here, then you just get surged away. Yeah, I think that's a very good point where you may just have to resort to Dooming the darks here. Um, unless there's some kind of a chain stun. If you're chain stunning them, you probably don't need the Doom to get the kill, so... Uh, I would say dooming darks here is fine. Really, if there's somebody in the front lines out of position, that's a core. I think dooming, dooming any of Luna, Lena, darks here before they get their spells off can win you the fight. So even if you doom like uh, Lena um, and she gets surged out of there and you don't kill her, it still likely wins you the fight because without the, the Lena's spell combos, um, I just don't see RNG able to, to take a fight. Maybe if they can get to that late game where there's a double refresher room available here for Asta Ares, then RNG again, just two heroes completely nullified out of a fight, and, and that could be devastating because they have a lot of heroes that do prioritize on using those abilities. So, do you actually feel like a team is kind of favored in that late game between RNG and, and Asta Ares here? I, I like Asta Ares overall. I think Jug's carry matchup against Luna is pretty good overall. Luna is very much spread damage. You never really threaten to kill the Jug and you are susceptible to the Omni Slash uh, bursting you down. You mentioned the double Doom. Uh, as far as a late game potency, that's you know one of the scariest things to go up against. Um, Lina has some scaling potential on the other side, I guess, with the BKB and Daedalus build. But all in all, yeah, I think Dire is just going to be the, the scarier late game lineup if we get there with a fairly even kind of farm distribution. Uh, there is pressure on RNG to kind of win this game around that, you know, early to mid game, second Roche timing with a, you know, three item Luna, for example, or at least to get far ahead. They can't just sit back and trade farm. Siamese Cat is in a bit of a peculiar position right now. They don't see this extra TP from Yona. Jimstone's gonna get dropped in the higher ground. I think God King just has to reset, actually. They're gonna look to take the fight as Felix. Wraps on the back, kills off the line. He's gonna try and deal with the second support, and in fact, they actually win this fight, even though Dyer had very good vision advantage. They just tried to get a little bit too greedy with not bringing extra numbers to take that skirmish. Yeah. They... Uh, yeah, the, the classic Undying Tombstone on the high ground fight as well, so you start getting vision of everyone, slowing them down, and yeah, just taking that fight without the necessary numbers. I think if... As, as you know, they kind of had this gold lead, but... They're going to take these fights, they need to bring at least two of their cores, and they're going for, you know, a Midas Doom. I think they're better off just continuing to... Maybe you throw, like, a support or somebody at, you know, at the Wolves to kind of feed away his life to enable your cores to just keep being greedy and farming, but they're not really ready to fight until this Doom has BKB Blink, I feel, or at least the BKB. Well, this Midas Devour, not even maxed out at the moment. It's an extra level to find that, but... His farm is at least continuing to pick up, as we saw the, the flyby darks here kind of suffer, but they're giving darks here a little bit of priority down bot as well. He's kind of taking this dead lane, just putting the shell on a creep, shoving that lane out, farming the jungle near the outpost. Very difficult hero to bring it down because they don't have like an instant jump. I guess clockwork right now with that six picked up can provide it, but before the blink on the lion, it's going to be difficult. So as soon as you see the vision, then flyby can just surge away and once you get that Aghanims, that is going to be a big timing kit for the side of RNG. Yeah, and that's one of the limiting factors for Asta Ares is that, yeah, their cores don't have a ways to start fights. They're, unlike RNG, you've got the Lena with the Yule Scepter, so Clockwork pretty good. He can kind of, you know, even throw away his life or a hook shot in to, to enable uh, his teammates to get some kills and take fights. But Asta Ares, their safer bet is just to play it slow, farm passively, um, and force RNG to make plays. They want to be the ones kind of counter-initiating on the Asta Ares side. Bait someone like the Timbersaw on the front lines, who has gone for that casual hood, and has a BKB queued up, so... Oh, wow. BKB's the name of the game, it looks like. Even Jug going for a BKB. They're going triple BKB. I meant, yeah, we talked a lot about their late game, but they're kind of looking to... I think maybe understand it. RNG is going to be really scary come this mid game, and they want to be ready to fight. Felix put out here with a hook shot. Level 9 as well on the Nyx Assassin compared to the 6 and 7 supports on Asta Ares. So this is actually going to give them a decent amount of experience here. So they use the hook shot, they use the finger of death as well to claim. Maybe even Phoenix thinking about getting involved there, but 
a nice little pick off for Aster Aries. We've got eight kills, about to be 16 minutes of the game. A, a bit of a slower one, but you know, we'll see with uh, all this farming when I have an incredibly fast paced mid game start to break out here. Yep. Luna's hitting Manta timing. You've got the Ag Scepter coming on Darkseer, which, you know, you Luna not the best Iron Shell target, but it still gives her that bonus health. Um, still, yeah, no, it, it's a little, I think, unfortunate that I could not draft into somebody to really pair up the Iron Shell with. Uh, but the Luna was definitely a good pick this game. Going back to your point about the BKBs as well, like, I, I really like the recognition from Aster Aries, because you highlighted RNG kind of need to win around this mid-game timing, and that's where we're going to see them thrive as... Oh, I'm bot, you're not. Maybe if they can get the kill now, nice side set, finally! The stun is there. Right. So we're gonna cost Felix his life. So it's a one for one. That's even with the wall committed. But now with the space he's making, what are Radiant able to do out of it? You see they're instantly trying to converge on mid. Maybe they can get this lane shoved in and an opportunity to put pressure on the tier one. Is they know that the Timber isn't around the area and quite often he's a hero that is kind of like the Guardian-esque hero to really protect those towers. So Ulu's gonna fill that role at the moment while the rest of Asta can link up to mid. I think one of the shortcomings and maybe item mistakes on the RNG side is this Lena. This Yule Scepter hasn't felt very impactful. I mean, literally zero kill involvement for D-Stones. Zero, zero, zero. I feel like the way he's played this game is fine. It's just he didn't need this Yules. And he, with all these BKBs coming out, this Yules is going to feel pretty useless. Uh, he would have been much better off just going straight into like Boots of Travel, BKB, into like the Daedalus build. I think he's headed that direction now with the BKB. We'll probably see it travels or Daedalus after that, but uh, the Yules is just a big kind of gold thing that he's not getting much out of. Yeah, so often we see this early item pickup for for Lina just gives you that setup for the stun and, and you can go around the map and get a lot out of it. It's not even the setup for the stun it's with dying a rewarding expedition, I believe, here for Red Panda. But it's also what the yours is able to give you. Like, the movement speed is great. She can get from lane to lane, the mana region as well. It just means you don't have to go back to base. So you're constantly a threat on the map. But it is also going to offer you a little bit of survivability versus something like the Omni Slash. I mean, two and a half seconds yeah. cyclone duration versus a three and a half maxed out on the Juggernaut. So you're neglecting a lot of damage is actually Gold King. Now, this is a big pickoff. They'll commit the Doom. That should be plenty with the help of the Finger of Death. Aster Air is a great maneuver from them. Finally, we're seeing a big kill in this game one. Yeah. Great move from there. Aster Ares should rotate in that triangle. Now almost halfway to his Blink Dagger, which is going to be a big pickup for them. Then they'll have that other way to kind of start to buy the Blink. War Stomp is, you know, as good an initiation as any, really. Will Smith to secure the tower. Possibly a kill as well. 100% a kill, it looks like. There we go. There's no backup there. I like the recognition. I was going to actually say when Luna respawns, maybe they think about going mid, knowing that Finger was used, knowing that Doom was used as well. And in fact, they didn't have to wait for the Luna. It's the, the tri heroes from RNG. And this is also Aghanims on flyback. So this could actually be a, a bit of a window here for RNG. And we, and we might see them look to get a little bit more active than what they've done previously. Is top, you know? TP out, will he make it? Oh, <laughs> big good time. It was in fog, luckily, so D Stones didn't know where he was TPing from. Good attempt from D Stones. He's now at least got his name on the board with the assist in the mid lane and uh, is continuing to farm well. It does look like we are headed to that kind of late game Dota with the pace of this game for now, but RNG say we don't want to go too late. You know, we're, you know, it's still 20 minutes in, and they're going to go for that Roshan at a very good timing with all of their key items up. Here comes Asta Aries, shot at the ready, but need to block Felix the looks to block it, yeah. Late. It's too hard. To, you got to give this one up. Yeah. There's that timing. They had the items. They knew the abilities were on cooldown from Dyer. High level teams just able to recognize when they have a slight power spike there compared to the other team. And they use it to their advantage. They pick up the Ages, the first one of the game, going to Gold King, who's very close to this Hurricane Pike as well. So they might give him a little bit of space and then look to maybe push through that top side of the map as they still have this tier 2 tower to claim. Yeah. Yeah, using on 9 you see being picked up by Lunas, like the casual Dragonlance, but upgrading the pike against, you know, the Clockwork. I would say even against Clockworks, you don't see this that often, but having the four staff for your teammates against, like, the Doom can be nice. Being able to reposition against Jug, so there is some utility for sure in this Hurricane Pike, even though it is a, a little unconventional. Going from bow to bow right now. 
<laughs> they're kind of, there's some oh, cool yeah. ones. I, I don't mind them. It can be a bit overwhelming, but there's some definitely some cool ones. So, Brass the Aries. I feel like they sort of feel okay about this game. Their Timber maybe doesn't have a clear kind of progression into the late game. Does have the Kaya Sanj. It just feels like he's going to be that damage sponge in the front line. Tank up spells. Get vision for the Doom to get those kind of good Dooms off and find targets. Because you don't want this Doom getting jumped. If Doom gets jumped by, uh, you know, Nyx Impale into Lina combo or even just a BKB Lina right clicking him down. That's how you lose a fight. So Timber needs to be the, the bait. Well, that is right now. Like, like you're saying, dangle the timber on the front line, smoke around, Radiant see who they can jump. Got the blink on Doom. We got the blink on Yona as well, so a couple blinks ready to reveal. But RNG, they actually want to trade this mid tower. They're content with taking the tier 2 up top, but will open up the map even more and start to give them outpost control as well. Yeah. Uh... I guess that's the Ares thought RNG might try and defend mid, that's why they smoked up there, but RNG just playing things by the book, going to the top of this is a typical kind of play. You get the Roshan, you go for tier two, they're gonna take the outpost. Uh, I don't think they get a whole lot more than that, and yeah, there's a fight coming their way. And you're in the front line. Tombstone, the hex up the Lunar. Not the target you want. Yeah, this does not seem like the greatest fight. As soon as Tombstone's dropped in a position like that. You just have so much control in the area where that's now actually two smokes used as well for our series. They tried to again link around the tier one mid and then they tried to take an engagement up top. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how this is going to come into play in, in the next, say, five minutes or so, having a, a bit of a disadvantage in their smoke count. Yeah, they're, and usually you want to see that smoke as like Aegis is expiring, but not a bad idea. I think they expected. RNG to kind of split up. It's like, oh, we give them the free tier 2 tower, then somebody's going to TP back to, you know, farm the Ancients, to maybe farm and push out mid. They were perhaps expecting them just to be split up, but RNG, very disciplined, stick together, drop the tombstone and fight around it, and as the Ares say, nope, let's get out of here. Nobody goes down. Status quo kind of remains, and RNG just going to look to, you know, it's all about positioning on the map for them right now. Um, they're not trying to force any fights. They're not even looking to go for smoke plays. There's no high ground play for them. They're just trying to take these out of towers and limit the areas of the map that Asta Ares can farm in. So right now RNG have kind of full control over this mid and top lane. I'd like to see maybe an Asta Ares here try and cut waves mid um, if they can get to that part of the map, but that's very tricky to do. And you don't want to get caught by a Nyx Assassin if there's no kind of sentries to protect you. See how the positioning right now on the, on the wings of the mid lane uh, very powerful position with that ward on the high ground and bait rng in this vicinity but it's also you see rng they're aware they're actually trying to play up to their power spot on the northern side for the hook in they've caught the undying and he burst him down but there's the force stuff undying's back to safety they tried to target him to bring him down but they weren't successful that's going to cost them the clockwork same with the lion as well the black drag back into the stun the doom unable to get the bkb or his ultimate off and now the damage with the rock oh, no. thinks it's enough as rng no casualties for them and they'll claim four kills Wow, huge fight for them. They just engage in. They, I think, just got a little Im very impatient, really. Trying to force a fight. They watched their Tutu Tower go down, saw the undying of all heroes. They, I, I don't know about that being the best target to initiate on. Um, yeah, if you kill them and you stop Tombstone coming into play, it can be nice, but there's all these kind of defensive utility items. The Darkseid can bail them out with some extra health on the Iron Shell. The Four Staff is there, and it was just a very messy fight where. Asta Ares don't have that clean burst to get that kill at the start. Jug never really finds an Omni Slash either. He was just trying to right click down the Luna. He used his entire BKB just to right click this Luna, who is very tanky, has high armor, high stats, going for this kind of very defensive build. And Jeep, it felt like that was almost like a freebie fight where Asta Ares just kind of walked into them and fed away some kills. Yeah, it kind of felt like they were a little bit undisciplined, honestly. They, they were just. You're waiting for RNG to walk up that high ground. They weren't doing it. They weren't doing it. They, they knew the positioning. They're like, okay, we'll, like we put so much emphasis on waiting for them to come up. We have to force a fight now. And forcing a fight into RNG, you just see the four stars and dying can 
is pretty hard to bring down and especially with all the follow-up survivability that they have and, and keep in mind that was also your triple bkb timing for asked areas i mean timber used his yeah. nine second jug used his nine second uh doom did use his but it was a big timing for the side of dire and, and now looking at the, the story of this game rng gets so much out of that first ages very good response. The second the hookshot came in, Luna's like, okay, I'm just going to throw my Eclipse and deter anybody else running in to back up this clockwork or force him to pop BKBs. And I, I like the way RNG's itemizing, Darkseid going to Lincoln's. Basically, they're doing everything to enable their Luna uh, to come online and be the strong. Like, you want to outscale a jug, you need kind of those steroid spells from your teammates. So there's an Undying with a bunch of heals. There's going to be this Lincoln Sphere to pop, which is kind of protect her from the Lion. Pick up the Doom, of course. Um, and also at times protect Darkseid from the Doom if he wants to be on the front line and not get caught out. Do you feel like then maybe Red Panda could think about itemizing for like a Solar Crest to continue to buff up Gokin? Yeah, I would like it. I was looking around, clicking, thinking, okay, who's getting Solar Crest? Right now it looks like Aeon Disc. The later the game goes, you start feeling like, you know, you're there's so many things that can instantly kill you, so you you want that solar crest it's like you kind of need to have committed to it earlier because both nix and dying are at that stage where they just don't want to get blink hexed and killed by this lion plus whoever follows follows up so i think the own this make a bit more sense now that we're in that kind of 30 minute stage of the game and there's crazy damage output on jug with omni slash with yeah lion finger so maybe a little bit too late um although i yeah i would have liked to have seen it just uh very slow methodical game here 17 kills 27 minutes in and the net worth is continuing to grow for rng as they're also starting to further hit these item timings as e stones has got a freshly picked up mkb scardy on god king they're just continuing to get an influx of items and it really feels like they're not too worried about the status quo of this game yeah and i think the the way rng are controlling this map They've got some nice keyboards down mid. They're just farming pretty efficiently, keeping up with, you know, a Midas Doom draft, Jug, who had a very fast Mjolnir. Um, it's still Luna and Lena on top of the net worth. And this Lena, MKB with an Orb of Destruction and a Satanic queued up, is a force to be reckoned with. That's there is. The it just still feels like is there a window we're waiting to see right now from dire or because they haven't really made a, a mo maneuver in, in quite a while yeah i think they kind of missed at least some of their earlier windows like this i feel like they didn't play very well around phoenix's timber saw which is also maybe just a problem with why we're you generally you want to you see this timber saw playing in the side lanes i think uh the mid lane is just trickier um pushing that mid tower early and taking over the lane is pretty hard when you're just versing this hero like Alina who's just constantly spamming out your lane. RNG are more than ready to fight. They group up for a smoke play and Master Ares is waiting for them. Ember may show himself. They've seen him, I believe. Red Panda, pick up the jump. Fly by, tail. only Vac on one. He's now with the BKBs drop. Let's see what Aster Ares can do. They've wasted a lot of their magic immunity along with the Doom as well, so they wasted. have to look to reset. Is RNG. That Lucent Beam. Oh, he got him. Oh, he with the shard. Vision. God King. Great use of the shard there. Cancels the Doom TP in the western tree line around this top tier one tower. As now they're continuing to push back. Phoenix is in trouble. He's continuing to timber chain further away, destroying his trees in the path of destruction. But now he's at the remnants of the top tier 2 tower for Dyer as Phoenix, Vac, Drag, Vac is in trouble. And they've got so much control once they can lock him in place and surround him as d Stones will find a double. Yeah, uh, d Stones has come online in a big way here in the late game. Only involved in five of these kills, but it's at the stage of the game where his impact cannot be understated. And a big problem goes back to a question you were asking early on. It's just like, yeah, who... Who do you doom? And there isn't an obvious, easy target. The Darkseer makes it hard to target him because of the Lincolns. The Lena kind of presents herself on the front lines, but had BKB plus two Fiery Souls up. So yeah, you doom her, and she kind of just backs off a bit. Um, but 
there was no follow up overall kill threat. I feel like they need to doom her, and Jug needs to blink on top for an Omni Slash at the same time because that's where you stop her from using that Yule Scepter defensively. I, I think you just have to commit multiple option uh, ultimates to kill this Lena. So we see RNG waiting for the Roshan to respawn. Our second one of the game is well, Park. We're doing a bit of a, a radio broadcast oh. at the moment. So we're gonna have to uh, keep tabs on. A Roche Hopefully, fight coming. Uh, yeah, it's about to fall. As the Ares positioning on the higher gun, but can they get the jump in? God King is going to be able to pick up the Ages, and there's just no extra follow up right now. They are disconnected the Timber. He's not even thinking about taking the fight, as they've already lost the Doom. We're losing trouble. A blink into the Blade Fury as the TP out, but As the Ares were just so disconnected i mean phoenix was standing yeah. in the mid lane he wasn't even thinking about coming over i'm not sure what the communication issues are right now for the dire side just yeah they're, they're team fighting really poorly um they played the lanes fine they you know farm well individually it feels like you know n nobody on their team is like a weak link but the the team player is kind of non-existent uh, i realize you guys at home unfortunately can't see things we'll get the observer feed up back up in a sec essentially they just went for a roche contest Went in kind of one by one, fed, and nobody... I mean, if they'd stolen the Ages, it would have looked nice, but I think they still die and lose the fight regardless. So even if RNG somehow get, you know, outplayed for an Ages deal, I don't think it actually changes anything. This game is just all but over. It's very just looking like there's no, no, no plays to be made. Yeah, they just been honestly playing to lose, it feels like. There's been no aggressive maneuvers to actually try and get back into this game. It's very passive and... It's playing into how RNG wants to perform as well. We're talking about this mid-game timing. We're 32 minutes in and they've got two full sets of barracks advantage. And uh, they're actually going to try and take some mega creeps now as well. Once the Luna gets up on the higher gun with a tier 3 down, it's going to be so difficult to defend. So they're going to try and prevent that. Is the jump in? God King force away. There's nothing you can do. The Luna's almost unkillable at the moment. Still has the ages and D stones coming into play. The machine gun from the Lena tearing apart Ash to Ares as they'll lose two. They've got a couple of buybacks. They're going to have to try and use the lives advantage that they have. But God King with the shard finds the lion stalking in the tree line. They're going to jump back on Phoenix as well. Just gets the chain back to safety. But God King, he doesn't even care. He's happy to trade his life for the ages. Now they're respawning out, but it, there's nothing left in the tank. It's as to Ares. They have to call it quits. And in fact, it's a rampage to end it. God King, he'll do this one in style. Very convincing win in the end. Um, I felt like coming out of the lanes, as the Ares were in a good position. They at least went even or even won some of these lanes. Uh, the Jug, the top lane, was fantastic. Um, Jug getting that first blood and getting off to a really good start made things look really good for them. But they just played too passively. Like They can play for the late game with this kind of farming style, but there's playing for the late game, and then there's just playing way too passive which is what we kind of saw out of them i think they still need to make plays to take over areas of, like if you're playing for late game you need map control to outform your opponents you need to take some of those early objectives and towers you also need to just punish some of these cool ones like eclipse is used go and take another fight now like that's a pretty big ultimate um that that goes down and it just never felt like asa Ares showed any signs or inclination that they were trying to do anything this game yeah it was just honestly not playing to win it felt like rng they had full reign of the map and it just enabled them to hit this mid-game timing that you highlighted through that game the second ages was enough for them to start walking up the higher ground to claim the objective advantage and then from there they did not look back as it's a 33 minute victory for rng we're going to send this to a break with game two coming up shortly